Welcome into the PH and X Suns post game show, a losers lounge edition or a dive bar, depending on how you prefer to call it. It was a 117 107 Suns loss to the Boston Celtics, but I don't think it was all bad tonight. Not that I want to act like a loss is anything good, but. They fought their asses off against the Celtics team. At least Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal did. I'm Aspo. He's Flex, a 40-40 club edition 40, of the 40, program. Uh, let's just get into it. General thoughts off the top. Uh, general thoughts of uh, about what uh, what happened tonight against the Celtics. Um, a lot of positives to take away. Really. I, I we, we watched the game here together. Y'all know what we talked about mm-hmm. while we were watching. I was saying it from the very beginning. Um, this is the best team in basketball. And so you, you want to test yourself against the best team. And there was no part of this game that I felt like the Suns couldn't play with the Celtics. There was a lot of self-inflicted things that the Suns mm-hmm. can clean up. Um, they had their opportunities. Listen, we talked about it pregame. What did we say? Tell them. If, what did we say? If the bench... Didn't play well. They were going to lose. It was a, it was a battle of the benches because the starting lineups were going to probably cancel each other out, even maybe in the Suns' favor, and it was going to be decided by which bench showed up and which yeah. bench didn't. Yeah, so, Suns' bench didn't. That's right. Suns' bench didn't. And then, to my surprise, um, there were 10 points combined from Royce O'Neal and Grayson Allen. Mm-hmm. Not going to win. Not no. going to beat the best team in basketball doing no. that. Now, do I believe that that's who these two players are? No. Tonight, tough game. Go well, ahead. I, I don't want to discredit the Celtics defense. Yeah. The Celtics defense is uh, one of the best, if not the best, in the NBA right now. And they played a brilliant game forcing the Suns off the three-point line. That they was, their defense on that front was very good, and they also knew who they could uh, keep, leave open, uh, David Roddy, and yeah. who they uh, who they had to stay up on, and they did a fantastic job. Yeah. Now, should Grayson and Royce have still converted of at course. times? Hell yes. Does Royce O'Neal have to figure out how to hit a goddamn floater? Uh, yeah, yes, he does. Yeah, but. You know, I I don't want to discredit the Celtics defense because no. I think sometimes sometimes we can have a tendency to do that. Celtics defense was spectacular, in particular on those guys uh, tonight. So I, I don't want to I don't want to discredit them. Yeah, but, no, no. But the first half to me, they made freaking Kevin Durant, Tom Hanks in Castaway. They left him on an island with Wilson and nobody there to help. Okay, it was him in the basketball. <laughs> Right. And nobody and and he was scoring like on at will. Nobody else was helping. Because Bradley Beal in the first half was four for eleven. Yeah, he was not he was not spectacular. Second half he turned it on. He played well, but that first half you know was all just can Kevin Durant keep yeah. him in in this? And the second he walked off the court, they had problems because nobody else was picking it up. I think Frank bears uh, bears some yep. of the responsibility. Not, not yep. some bears a lot of a the lot. responsibility lot. tonight as well. Yeah, not playing ball ball at all in the third quarter drove me crazy. Uh, deciding to go to David Roddy when you make your run and it's a three point game in the third quarter, allowing Boston. To do the Josh Akogi, no disrespect, but they played the Josh Akogi role and said, okay, buddy, you can go out there and get two wide open threes and you're going to miss them and we're going to come back and we're going to convert and we're going to turn a three-point game to a nine-point game just like that. That, to me, was the wrong move. I don't think Roddy is built or ready or been here long enough or has enough sweat equity to be in a game this important versus that magnitude of opponent. So that bothered me. 
Again, Bobo, I think, should have played in the third quarter. I think you could have stretched some more minutes with Royce and Grayson, but you could have done a better job than going to Roddy. I'll say it again, Espo. This is the best basketball team in the league. Their defense is incredible, but yet the Suns had multiple opportunities. They create turnovers. They're on a break. They can't convert any of them. Especially late there That's in the game. That's not great defense on that part. Mm -hmm. That's lack of focus and execution for the Suns. Yep. How many times? I could count maybe four or five times where they get a stop. They're on a three-on-one break, two-on-one break, and they get nothing out of it. That's uh, that's something I know they can clean up. Oh, and yeah. then, again, the, the two things I want to point. Three-point game, late in the third quarter, you go to David Roddy, it gets out of hand. You fight Sa back. Saban, too, at that point. Saban was another yeah. one that, that was uh, really bad. Um, and then you get it down to five. Mm -hmm. you under a, two minutes. You had a chance on that on that break to cut it to a one a possession, one possession game. game and it didn't happen no. right you actually get, you had two chances, had two to cut chances it to one back point. to back so it's five point game with two minutes left the best team in the league the best defense in the league and you're getting nothing from your bench and you got two starters that went MIA and you got your your one of your franchise players in street clothes and you you down five with two minutes to go, man. Listen, I'm not gonna look at this loss and be uh, upset about it. I, of course, we like to win, but I'm looking at this and I'm saying the Suns just showed me. They just gave me a little bit of a snapshot of how how they can how good they can be, um, and how they can go toe to toe with some of the best in the league. And so I'm I'm gonna take the positive approach. Yeah, I know y'all say I'm Mr. Positive tonight. I am Mr. Positive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, stick with it. Look, I, I, there are a lot of positives. I also think a few of our our old favorites, the hits that we play here, uh, it came back to rear their ugly head. Frank's rotations, like we talked about, and like you said, they they can't. They, they seem to. I, I don't know what it is. Get nervous when they're when they're on a break, uh, you know, three on one, four on two kind of break, and they can't hold on to the ball. They can't make the the right play. It's it's like they move too fast sometimes in those situations, which we've seen a lot. Uh, you know, so there are some things that we've seen that continue to happen, which are frustrating. And I don't yeah. think we see David Roddy again. If you want to go that size, you're probably gonna. Go ish from Wainwright once you're comfortable that he's, he's up back, to speed yeah. and and feeling that way. But it was egregious, yeah, to to not play Bull Bull more than ten minutes. That that was bad. He he had a fantastic night, thirteen points. I believe he didn't miss from the field. If he did, it maybe well, let me take a look here so I'm accurate. Bull Bull was six of seven. He missed once. He missed that three pointer, but he was almost perfect from the field. Was getting and scoring on Cornette and the other guys that they were yeah. throwing at him. Uh, he was very good on his rotations defensively. I yeah. think only one time was there an issue. Ha he only plays 10 minutes, and I do not understand it. Uh, you know, and and he also, uh, it's it's not as if they were committing to playing like big uh, burly all the time. They took Nurk out. They went small. Then they had Grayson, or excuse me, they had Eric Gordon, yeah. who, uh, who was atrocious yeah. uh, out there when, I would have just as rather have had Bull Bull yeah. out there because he was making things happen. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's why I couldn't I couldn't agree more, man. Um, this was a night of the others. Mm -hmm. The others. And man, man, let me tell you, let, first of all, let me say, Kevin Durant is, I mean, he's incredible, man. He's incredible. I mean, 45 points, 10 assists, six rebounds, 69%. From the field. Nice. You can't ask for anything more from Kevin Durant. No. Brad Beal was fine. Brad Beal came. He gave he gave us enough. He did enough for me to feel like, okay, you know what? You did your part. Nurk was 11 and 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, Nurk was fine. Yeah, I mean, listen, Grayson and Royce. I don't I don't know what the numbers are. I, I know my super producer, E Money over there, got some got some info on that that we 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 wanted to put together. But um at the end of the day, uh Espo Man is if if you just play to your averages, if you just play to Grayson and Royce's averages. 
Well, well let's take let, it, let's take a look. We got a graphic a with it, and this is this is the game here. I know we want to said the bench too, but when two of your starters combined for ten, like it was just it was a bad night. The shooting the shooting was terrible. They combined uh, for a what does this a four of seventeen night from the floor and a one for ten yeah. from th- they shot ten percent from ball the three game. point land. That's the ball game. Uh, now, now am I gonna sit here and go? No, I'm not gonna go crazy on on Grayson and Royce. No, okay, it's it's a basketball game. They they had a tough game, and you know what, Espo? This is why I keep saying I, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this till I'm damn blue in the face. I'm gonna pound the table saying this. This is why. I think this team is built for the playoffs. You know why? Because if this were a playoff series, and this is what game one looked like, you have an an, an ability to make an adjustment. The other team too. Mm -hmm. But you have an ability to look and say, what did they do to Grayson and Royce today that made them uncomfortable? They ran them off the three-point line? Okay, this is what you do. This is why I love playoff basketball, because it's a game of adjustments. It's a seven-game series. And like we know, being up 2-0 in the finals, you have to win four. I don't give a damn what it looks like early. You have to win four. And I think this Phoenix Suns basketball team is built for the playoffs because when guys have these type of moments, there's going to be an adjustment period where you can adjust. Because I know Grayson is better than this. We we would not be sitting where we are without what Grayson has done for us this year. And so, yeah, I mean, he had a tough one tonight. He had a tough one tonight. So did Royce. But I'm telling you, man, I am taking positives out of this, Espo. I really yeah. am. I mean, and, and Royce played well in other areas. He, he had the effort. It wasn't a lack of effort. It was just... Poor shooting tonight from Royce, but you bring up the the playoff, and I agree. This team, I think this team is built for that. And you got to consider, okay, no Devin Booker as yeah, well. And yeah. I get it; they didn't have Chris Stops, but you know Devin plays a big role there. But you bring up in a playoff series adjustments. Yeah. Am I trusting Frank Vogel to be the guy That's the to question. make the right adjustments? <laughs> and question. tonight did not give me a lot of faith in that because he gave Roddy minutes in the first half and gave Bull Bull a few minutes. And I, I, and but Bull Bull performed and Roddy didn't do much of anything. Yeah. That's when I I wish I had seen adjustments going into the second half. Yeah. Where I was smarter with that because okay, I get it. You have you have a day or two to adjust in a playoff series, but you need to be able to adjust on the fly yeah. too, because every quarter is is a chess match yeah. in the playoffs. And tonight he lost that chess match. Yeah. He very much lost that chess match, and it, and it could have cost them the game well, in that. You know, you know what's crazy though. Know, this is this is why I love basketball. This is the beauty of basketball. Um, it's really a, I say it all the time. It's a miss and make league, right? We 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 mm-hmm. know this. Here's the beautiful thing about basketball, is that we we're sitting here, we're watching this, and I don't. I'm with you. I do not agree with what Frank did in the Roddy minutes. Right? Roddy goes out there, he misses two wide open threes. The funny thing is, if he makes both those threes, we probably win this game. <laughs> Right, so I'm 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 gonna call yeah. it like it is. Yes, but if David Roddy is the guy that they're leaving open, they're leaving him open for, for a reason, reason. Right. and and that's again, Bull Bull can hit those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ish no, Wainwright has hit him before. It was the wrong call. Roddy most likely not gonna make him, but you're right. He's he may be the hero if he turns around and hits those, as for, but he didn't. And the average he said he was. No, you're guy. right. You know, no, no, no. Like, I'm, I'm just I'm yeah, just saying. I'm know. just saying how close. Like I want people to understand. That it says 117-107 there, right? But but I also want people to understand that this game was closer than that. This game was one or two shots yeah. here, there, and it completely changes the outcome. And I'll go to those two shots. An yeah. NBA player, wide open, um, on an island, could have got a cup of coffee, could have drank a beer with you, Espo. And, and if he, he could have chugged two of them as fast chugged as I chugged them. them so. If he hits those two shots... I'm not. I don't think it's crazy to think the Suns could steal him or pull out this one. So, yeah, he missed him, and he should have missed. And he missed him. Celtics were smart to sit there and leave him open. It felt a little Adele Nader ish. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. No, I, and I, what I mean is when he didn't play for like five months, yeah, and Monty just, just threw him into the Western Conference yeah. Finals or something yeah. like that. Like that's what this felt like. It's like, yo, this is two juggernauts on prime time. 
you know, you you, you got playing the best team in the world. And then I, out of nowhere, you throw David Roddy in, down three in the third? I'll, I'll admit, I don't know if Fish was dressed tonight. I did not look into that. Yeah. But i much rather, if you're looking for a guy uh, that has that bigger body, if that was the thought, i much rather would have Ish Wayne right out there because yeah. we've seen him hit those threes. I mean, remember the Dallas game last year around this time yeah. on national television. He hit multiple threes in the fourth quarter to turn around and help you win. Right. And so I, I don't know. I I can't get I'm into the mindset don't. of Frank. I don't – because it, it, it does not make sense. I'm sure Gerald will ask him about that in the post game, and we'll get some – thoughts on that but you know what we live in the great state of arizona mm. and in times like these we can remember that the sun will come out tomorrow yeah and there's always something to do outside and our friends over at the arizona lottery are encouraging to get you out there and experiencing the great places all over the state of arizona you can check in at locations throughout the valley they've got 10 destinations across the state from flagstaff to yuma from tucson to timbuktu i don't think there's a timbuktu <laughs> arizona but all over the state 10 different locations that you can check into for the chance to win prizes there's three different ways to play and win big uh play arizona lottery adventure lottery tickets featuring three iconic landscapes picacho peak have you ever been down there no nope. it's on the way to tucson it's nice okay. monument valley and camelback mountain these tickets have prizes up to fifty thousand dollars uh you can also check in those places and you can also visit azadventure.com for details and directions uh so check in at those destinations and uh enter your tickets online for a chance to win up to a million dollars in cash and arizona travel prizes the arizona lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes it's also about giving back to the state and its communities visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win one million dollars in cash and arizona travel prizes and if you want to go somewhere to have some fun in the great Great state of Arizona. Oh, well, we got something for you. It's the Tea Party coming up on March 23rd. You can watch the Suns game with us. Uh, and then that's it, all the events start at 5 p.m. You can watch the game with us. We're gonna have drinks, we're gonna have merch, we're gonna have contests, we're gonna have prizes, and it's all presented by our friends over at Four Peaks out at Dobson Ranch. It's gonna be a hell of a time, and you should come out there and join us. And uh, if you if you need a little cash, because Sometimes gas can be a little expensive, and yeah. uh, you know, depending on where you live, if you're a West Valley, uh, you know, guy or gal, you're gonna need some cash to get out to to Dobson Ranch. And our friends over at Desert Financial Credit Union have you taken care of. Let me tell you about it. For more than 84 years, Desert Financial Credit uh, ha Union has been Arizona's largest and most trusted local credit uni union, dedicated to creating exceptional experiences by giving back to the community and providing financial solutions that make lives better uh look at desert financial for checking and savings accounts mortgages loans credit cards investment options and oh so much more uh so when you join and open a free checking account online you're gonna get two hundred dollars in bonuses get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200 let's take a look at some of the numbers today it's what's in the box brought to you by our friends over at desert financial credit union uh, what's in the box yeah 117 107 celtics win uh three point line we talked about it you, we knew we were going to probably have to win this category we didn't uh celtics shoots 15 for 39 39 percent Suns 9 for 31, 29%. Uh, that in itself is your ball game. Uh, turnovers weren't crazy. You know what I, I mean? There was times in the game where we made mistakes, but 15 to 12. Uh, I, I'm not losing my mind over that. The bench points, again, uh, we talked about pregame, and it, it came to fruition. Uh, bench points 27 to 16. If my math is right, I'm not a mathematician. That's plus 11. Is that right? Yep. And the Suns lose by 10. Correct. So there's your ball game, folks. And then the non starters, the not the his, non star the starters, the non star <laughs> starters. So we're taking KD, yeah. Beal, uh, Tatum, Tatum and, Brown. and Brown out. And the the road, the other, the other starters got, got busy plus 13, 34 to 21. So yeah, I mean, when you look at it that way, uh, the guys that needed to show up in their roles showed up tonight for the Celtics, and our guys didn't. And uh, we take an L, and it sucks because, 
I mean, you got such a great performance from KD, right? You got such a great performance from KD. He couldn't do anything more than what he already did. Um, and for those guys not to show up, it's upsetting. You know what I mean? It's disappointing. But at the end of the day, man, I mean, what are you going to do? You got you got to keep moving. You got to keep chugging away. Um, those guys, a guy specifically, Grayson, has been really good the last two. And so it, it is what it is. I feel bad that KD had uh, put, put up such a good game and, and his supporting cast didn't show up and help him. But it is what it is, bro. Yeah, that was What's in the Box brought to you by our friends over at Desert Financial Credit Union. Uh, I... <sighs> Sorry. I don't know. I, I, I you look at the three Sorry. point line and I think that that was definitely I don't know what was dying over there but Bro, I uh, was that, like I, if it I, quacks like a duck and I, it walks I, like I a know, duck I like that, <laughs> I thought that was you behind the Mac. Uh, no, I was so confused. Hey, actually, you know what that was? That was the Suns bench choking. That was Eric Gordon yeah. choking over there. <laughs> uh look, it, the the game plan obviously for the Celtics was to try to run the Suns off the three point line, stay close to them. So it doesn't surprise me that they lost uh, the three point, uh, yeah. the the three point tonight twenty nine to thirty twenty nine percent to thirty nine percent, but it was that bench. It, it was the it, it, the bench and really okay. I came down to three guys. We already talked about uh, two of them and Royce and and oh. uh, and Grayson, but then Eric Gordon. That that's the other guy. We said it in pregame that you needed him. To, to hit. You needed him to hit some threes uh, and help out. Give that bench a little something. Tonight, zero points in 29. He and I had the same amount of points tonight in this contest. Damn. He, I do not know what is going on with him, but I'm at a point where the second any of these other guys come back, I'm testing my other options, all right? Because you expected him to come in and be a guy that contributed. He was the one veteran minimum guy you looked at and you went, okay, he took less to come here and he can be a contributor. And he is not, at least not of, as of late. And this is the kind of game where you need him to step up. That's where his veteran experience, his ability to shoot, was supposed to pay dividends. And instead, you get almost 30 minutes of jack squat out of him. Yeah. And that is not acceptable in a big game, especially bench-wise, right Luke mother freaking Cornett, a guy that looks like he should be in a movie with Matt Damon, hit more points than freaking Eric Gordon. He had a bigger there. Look, oh, he's hanging out with Matt that. Damon. Luke Cornett. There we go. Like he looks like your typical Boston dude that should be a CPA rather than a goddamn NBA big man. And he did more than Eric Gordon did yeah. for the Suns tonight. He did by a landslide. Yeah, EG, listen, I, I haven't, uh, EG hasn't been my favorite guy to watch lately. Let's just say that. Uh, it just, just hasn't. I mean, um, I, 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 I'm with you. I think once Book gets back and once we get some, uh, you know, guys like Akogi back and Book and uh, a little bit more health, I, I don't I don't know what he's doing for this team anymore. Like I, I I'm starting to question his true role. He's supposed to shoot the basketball. He's supposed to make shots. Hey, There's too many times where he doesn't even want to shoot the basketball. No, he play, 29 minutes. How many shots do you think he had? Three. Three. <laughs> Three freaking shots. That's almost, he almost plays 30 minutes. That's one shot every 10 minutes. Yeah, that's not it, man. That's that's what what a, a frat guy does on mill. One shot every 10 minutes. <laughs> this is a dude who, like four months ago, was putting out player articles about how he wanted to be more involved and wanted to take more shots. And then he finally has a chance with no book and he's nowhere to be found. I, yeah. If, if I have to see one more jump pass, from this guy, I'm going to lose my ever-loving mind. Yeah. Shoot the ball, and if you don't make it, glue your ass to the bench. Because this team needs somebody else to step up in these situations on the bench, and you're just not getting it done. And I'm not going to give a free pass, pass to Drew Eubanks either tonight. Drew Eubanks did not help this team tonight either. Drew Eubanks finished... O of O. He didn't get a damn shot. Another one that's out there and doesn't get a damn shot. 11 minutes, 
How many rebounds do you think he got? 11 minutes. Uh, he averaged three? as many rebounds uh, for per 10 minutes as Eric Gordon averaged shots. Three? One. What? He wow. had one freaking rebound in 10 minutes. Wow. I hate plus minus, but this one does it justice. A minus 20 on the court. Wow. Okay. Luke Cornett, again, kicked somebody else's ass on the Suns. All right. Yeah. I The bench, we, we will give. We will give a hard time to the starters when they don't play well. Well, the bench deserves it too tonight, yeah, right? Yeah. This was just outside of Bull Bull, who was six of seven with four rebounds. The bench combined for three points and let me do the math, five rebounds. Damn. Three points and five rebounds from the rest of the bench, not named Bull Bull. Damn. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, if it walked like a duck and it quacked like a duck, and call it a dinosaur, it's a fucking duck. Call it flex clearing his throat into the microphone, yeah, man. Yeah, that was quack, bad. Quack, I, I, quack. I, yeah, yeah, I could do that again for y'all. No, later, not, please uh, don't. Joking, no. Joking, joking. no, 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 the Espo, man, is, is, is terrible. It really is. And it's, it's, uh, it's something that needs to be addressed. Like, they, you can't have that type of disappearing act. And I, I'm seeing people in the chat, and I think y'all losing our point. You know, there's, there's some people saying, you know, the Suns starters outscored theirs. I, we know that. Yeah. But that's because we got a superhuman effort from KD tonight. Um, but w- what we did was we separated the superstar players from the rest of the starters, and the Celtics clearly outplayed them. So you got outplayed in your starting lineup by your role players, and you got super outplayed by your bench. Yeah, I mean— this is why I'm saying, though, Espo, look at the score. Look at what we know that game really was. That game was a, a potentially a one-possession game with under two minutes to play. Mm-hmm. With all, If I told you coming into the game, Roll yeah. Starter is going to get outscored plus 15. The bench is going to get sco- outscored plus 10. The Celtics are going to have plus 20 for the three-point line. Sorry, though. Um you know, all that shit combined, bro. I mean, it's... it's oh, I, yeah, you would have thought it was nasty. Out. Look, yeah, you get blown look, out. I mean, I don't... I, I'm not upset with the game as a whole. I think they showed that they... Uh, I, I, yeah. I think they showed that they can compete with anybody. And you, you put that together with what they did against the Nuggets the other night, and I feel pretty good because yeah. both those situations were without book. Uh, and honestly... The Nuggets game wasn't the the greatest offensive performance by KD or Beal until overtime, right? Yeah, and and they yeah. they wound up, uh, you know, winning that game tonight. Your bench and Grayson and Royce disappear, and you're still in this game. So I don't think this was a bad game, but there were a few people that needed to step up that could have made this a great game. That you could have beat the Nuggets, one of the best in in the West, defending champions, and then one game later beat the freaking Celtics, who have had a net rating that's one of the best we've seen in basketball uh, throughout. Yeah, uh, in, in, I'm talking in history, not the, just this season. So this isn't the sky is falling tonight, but this is. There were three guys, four guys that if they step up and give you anything, anything where they didn't give you anything, this is a different game. And and that's that's the frustrating point to it, right? I, I, yo, E, can you what is Eric going average for the season? You have any idea? You know, so so I'm I'm just sitting I'll here. I'll get that I'm, number for I'm you. I'm sitting here and I'm wondering, Espo, because you're saying he played almost 30 minutes, so we got a big uh, fat zero. <laughs> His stats, 12.2 points, two rebounds, two and a half assists, 44.9% field goal shooting. So he had just 12? Yeah. Okay. I mean, granted, a lot of that was from his yeah, early, from when his he was, early when he was season. Yeah, crazy but, minutes, yeah. right. But so, again, again, if you just take half of that, if you just give me half your average, now it's a full Potentially yeah, you me, four points. You give me six from him, one Grace and three, right. and we're and, looking and, at a different a, game. A whole different ball One game. Eubanks tipping. I right. mean, it's not that they needed to right. needed was to. It, we didn't need Hercules. No. We just needed average. Some, <laughs> if, 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 slightly below, below, below average. average. <laughs> right, below average. <laughs> if you get below average performances instead of absolute atrocious performances, yeah, you probably win this basketball game, man, and 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 credit the Celtics. I thought the Celtics played good across the board. 
I, I thought they played good across the board. Offensively, they weren't weren't great. But okay. I, again, how much is that is the Suns' defense? How much is that is, is the Celtics uh, play? You know, not playing well. I yeah. don't know, but but their defense, I thought was was exactly as I advertised yeah. in most cases. They knew KD was going to get his, and I think that was strategic. Yeah, uh, Brad Beal came in and and played. Well, in that second half, I believe Agreed. it was six of nine, but they shut down everybody else. Yeah, they, no. they, they annihilated them. Espo, uh, real quick, I just want to give a quick I don't normally do this, mm-hmm. but if you give me a minute, of course. I, I just, it, could, because this is, you know, we look at this every night, and there's certain games that just don't make sense. So, real quick, field goal percentage Phoenix, 50%, Boston, 48%. We outshot them. Okay. We, uh, we talked about they had us at the three point line. Uh, free throw attempts, uh, 13 to 16, not a big problem, but we shot 60%. So we missed six free throws, Mm -hmm. but here's the rest of it. This is the best team in basketball rebounds, 43 to 41 offensive rebounds, 13 to 10 defensive rebounds, 30 to 31 assists, 29, 21 steals, seven, six. There is nothing in this box score turnovers, 15 to 12. Like there is nothing in this box score. That screams Celtic domination. No. Nothing. There is nothing in this box score that screams Celtic domination. It, if you look at this box score and don't look at the final score, you can trick yourself into saying, yo, Suns beat the Celtics tonight. Because they damn near outplayed them, played them equal or outplayed them in most categories. And that's, a, that's why there are certain times in the season where you're going to take a loss, but you're going to look back at it and you're going to say, I just don't feel that bad about this loss. Well, okay. So it's tough because the standings are so close in the West. I get that. And I and, know people are tripping and, and, right and, and I understand that people are concerned about that as well. You should be. But you also look at it and you go, they they hung in there with who is which is with a team that many think is going to be in the NBA finals. Right. Without arguably your 1A or 1B player, however you want to look at it with Devin Booker. Correct. So so I don't leave freaking out that that things are awful, but I look at it and I go, okay, you did fall now to seventh in the West, and you're playing this <laughs> you know, difficult dance where well, you- if you go on a slide— you you could very much be in trouble, and if that if you get to that point, it's that's what's concerning about it is the schedule is tough. Oh, you I keep can't, doing it. I'm you sorry. Can't, <laughs> the schedule is tough, and you can't you can't lose too many. Otherwise, you're talking playing. Yeah. And so that's where this close but no cigar kind of kind of thing. The the moral victory is tough as well. But they got to take care of business uh, in another game that maybe they shouldn't have won to make up things. But God, yeah, I, I, yeah no, you know what, Espo? Again, I, I can let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. You make a great point. Um, I'm not I'm not playing. I don't want to play. I don't want to play that game. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, it, it, the next game's Cleveland. And I get that we're seven. We were just six three hours ago. Yeah, you're not far from five. I <laughs> we mean. just dropped down to seven for the night. And then we can play Cleveland on Monday and win. Book may be returning on Monday, by the way. But we play Cleveland and win. Or we could be right back to six, maybe even five. And and here's the thing. Um we're not the only team that's in this little dance. No, and the, whole, a, the whole back half of the West. Right. Is. So it's not like I would feel different if if you're sitting at seven and you're looking up at six and it's three and a half, four games. You like, okay, now we got. But we're talking about half game. Like yeah. we're gonna play Cleveland on Monday. Donovan Mitchell's not playing. Yeah, but if you go look at that schedule, mm-hmm. if you're not careful. You could be looking up at three or four games back uh, of could, that six, of course you, could. you know, because because it is that close. So I understand why why fans uh, could be concerned because there is no, you know, there's only a handful of e- easy games left on this schedule. It's brutal, and you're going on a road trip. 
that's brutal, including Cleveland. You're gonna be right. you're gonna be against Boston. You're gonna be in Milwaukee. Like I get iron sharpens iron that we think this team is as good as those as those teams, but the path is not easy. And I think they will make the playoffs. I think they will uh, be uh, the sixth seed or the five seed, and they won't be in the play in. But I understand the concern that other people have. With yeah, them. I mean, again, this is why I'm taking it one game at a time, though. Like, you know, uh, there's still, what, 18 left? Mm-hmm. I'm not tripping. I'm taking it one game at a time. You're going to play Cleveland? Well, you know what? Just like we had a couple games without book that cost us, you know, potential wins. Well, I mean, Cleveland's not going to have Donovan Mitchell on Monday. They're not going to have uh, Evan, Mo- uh, uh, Evan Mobley on, on, mm-hmm. on Monday. Right, um, so you're dealing with that. You get Boston back again, uh, with with potentially book bag. That should be exciting, man. I'm not looking at. I get what you're saying. I know there's this fear of, oh, well, if you lose three in a row, where are you? I don't like to live in that space, man. I just, I just feel like we we got a game on. We got a game on Monday. There'll be games tomorrow. Let, let me just say that too. There are teams that will play tomorrow that if they don't win, the Suns can go back up the standings without even playing a game. So it's so close that I can't get into the space of, oh, my God, we're seven. We might be playing. And by the way, uh, I, I, I came on record and said I, I wouldn't mind if we're seven. <laughs> I would not mind if we're seven, as well. I, I wouldn't mind it. Yes, but I don't like any situation that you put yourself in Two losses yeah. and you're out, right? Yeah. Right? That's yeah. that's the only thing. That's the thing. Because, yeah. because as we know, any given night in the NBA, right? I, and, get, you it. Know, like, I get it. I just I don't like that idea. But but look, the the biggest thing for me is you wasted another worldly performance by Kevin Durant. That was vintage KD. That was everything you could want from KD. And that's again, that's another thing, right? Like he put that performance out there. You were in, uh, had a chance to win, but you didn't. And it's one game at a time because mm-hmm. it's all you can do right now if you're this team. And I think all all you should care is, are are they at least six, right? That's it. I mean, whatever. They punch the ticket if they're, uh, you know, if they're in the play-in as well. And if they're seven, they're playing two home games in the play-in at worst, yeah. with, you know, and whatever. But I want to see him... Get to six, but it, we'll we'll yeah. see what they're what they're capable of doing. But you know what? If you feel like you just need to to take a breath, right? You need to you need a little time before the playoffs. I got I got a spot that you can go and you can recharge the batteries. You can head over to Gila River Resorts and Casinos. They got the best food, the best gaming floor, the best sports book with our friends over at BetMGM. But that's not it. There's more. They got a fantastic resort down at Wild Horse Pass. They've got a a, a concert venue where they're gonna have some big concerts. Okay, they're coming up. Ice Cube's gonna be out. There. Oh, Cube, let's yeah. go. E forty's gonna be out. E forty, my guy. Who yeah. else? Oh, uh, big, big Daddy, Daddy Kane, Kane, baby. Big Daddy, smooth operator. I mean, yeah. no, not as good as Big Daddy Mark West, but Big Daddy <laughs> Kane, good as well. And all in one place. You don't have to go. You you can go check in and that's all in one place okay that is that is how our friends at gila river resorts and casinos do it it is an unprecedented level of entertainment and excitement that you won't find anywhere else in the desert they set that bar so high you can't even see it that's how high okay it is so head over to gila river resorts and casinos and let them show you what next level is all about flex you do you at gila river resorts and casinos visit play at gila.com for more details and on a night like tonight you need what you cracking on you need i'm cracking open a peach gold nail from our friends over at four peaks this is okay. my favorite brew okay. that they have over there. the sun's brew is good too the wild wheat the kilt lifter they're all fantastic but i love myself some peach ale so okay. cheers to you tonight go ahead dog rock, rock that that's open. good i'm not chugging it tonight this no, is you don't need this to is a that. beer 
this is a beer that you savor because the peach flavor is spectacular. Uh, but if you want to learn more about our friends over at Four Peaks, uh, you can do so uh, by following them at Four Peaks Brew and at Four Peaks Pub to get the latest on Arizona's premier craft brewery. And I recommend you get the Bad Birdie Golden Ale when you're there. Special collab between Bad Birdie and Four Peaks. It's super drinkable, the perfect companion at the tea box or in your fridge visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite beers and events must be 21 or older to drink four peaks and please drink responsibly all right we got our gripes out we also shared what we thought was good but we saved the best for right now and that best is our big bright shining star tonight damn it's kevin durant I'm a big, bright, shining star. I'm he a had, big, bright, shining star. There you go. He had, he had 45 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. The man was en fuego all evening, and I, I can't say enough, right? He carried the team in the first half. He carried the team in the second half. He carried the team... All evening on his back, uh, he was 18 of 26. He had a steal. He had everything that we talked about. He was spectacular this yeah. evening. I yeah. could not have been more impressed with what Kevin Durant brought to the table. Uh, and I don't know why uh, we don't have a camera right now, but we'll keep talking. The haters uh, don't want us okay. to talk about we Kevin Durant. Can't. We can't. Yeah. Katie shot the He's lights so out. Damn hot. He yeah. shot the lights out, and now That's you can't happened. see us. That's that what is happened. exactly what happened. He got so damn hot that he knocked the lights out. And and listen, man, in the last three games, Espo, I mean, he's averaging damn near 39 points a game. Yeah, he was fantastic. 39 a game since in the last three. And so, yeah, man, I mean, Kevin, Kevin was fantastic, Espo. And that's why I'm going to slightly disagree with something you said. Oh. Slightly. I don't like disagreeing Come on, with you. just disagree. Take oh. take off the kitty gloves. I can take a New York punch. Come on. All right, so I'm going to disagree with you when you say wasted effort. And I'll tell you why. I get what you meant. Wasted effort in in, in, in regards to win-loss. Um, but what I'm seeing, here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a guy that is starting to build momentum and starting to really cook at the right time during the right time, during this tough schedule, mm -hmm. we're going to need that. Agreed. And going into the playoffs. And so, yeah, I, I don't look at it as a wasted effort because the 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 way he's playing, uh, that that's kind of stuff rolls over, that travels. Uh, and so, yeah, almost 39 a game for the last three games. Keep cooking, dude. Don't worry about the end results. Don't don't trip. You keep playing the way you're playing, the end results are going to work themselves uh, out. Okay, Mr. Jersey. I'm sorry, dog. No, I'm sorry. No, you don't have to be sorry because you totally uh, – we're not disagreeing here. Okay, right, it okay. wasn't wasted effort by Kevin Durant. It was by just frustrating okay. by the Suns to watch him there uh, deal with that, go play his best game probably as a Sun, right? That was – that was yeah, unbelievable. That was, that, it's the best game as a son because of the level of competition. Yes. Okay. That's fair. fair? That's okay. very fair. Okay. He he was Thank you. He was the the quintessential Kevin Durant. Tonight. Yes. And I feel for him because that's everything you could want from him. He gave you everything tonight. Yes. And the the handful of guys couldn't just do the bare minimum. To get him over the top tonight. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Kevin Durant was amazing. And and that's why you trade for him, right? Yeah. That's why you have him on the squad is because he's going to give you performances like that. He can go against the best defense in the NBA and torch him the way he did tonight. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm frustrated because they did him a disservice Tonight, not and that yeah. he wasted an yeah. effort in any way there. Yeah, no, and, and that deserves to be pounced on, absolutely. Uh, his teammates didn't step up. I don't want to say his the certain role players, and we've called them out, Grayson, Royce, E.G., Eubanks, uh, David Roddy, Saban, Saban Lee. Am I missing somebody? Yeah. Anybody bad. not named uh, Anybody Bradley, not Beal, named Bradley Yusuf Beal, Beal and Yusuf Nurkic was, 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 was terrible tonight. And 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 need to be called out, and rightfully so. But uh, 
again, man, it, it, what are we going to do? Uh, we got to get ready for another game on Monday. And like I said, book, book hopefully should be coming back. Uh, Cleveland's dealing with some injuries, man. So we got to take it one game at a time and see what happens tomorrow in the Western Conference. Yeah, well, it wasn't just us that enjoyed what we saw from Kevin Durant. His head coach, Frank Ooh. Vogel, had this to say after the Let's game. Let's see. Big time performance. Yeah, you know, hard it is to do what he did offensively while guarding uh, an MVP candidate the, the entire night. I mean, I don't think people understand how how difficult that is. Um, so just a, a really really special performance uh, by Kevin Durant tonight. Um, disappointing that we couldn't get the W for him, but he was awesome tonight. I mean, I would hope you would think he was awesome because he was. Uh, let's take a look at he also, or Frank Vogel had something to say about their three point shooting this evening. Yeah, I, I think for the most part, I mean, I, I thought, you know, a, a big problem with, uh, with our, uh, our offense tonight was just overpassing in the paint. You know what I mean? I, you know, I think the quality of threes off look at the tape was pretty good for the most part. Um, you know, but overpassing in the paint caused the, you know, gave us probably five extra possessions that we lost. You know, that we just got to shoot the ball or we got to spray it back out. I mean, this team's too quick with their hands um, to turn the ball over like that. Yeah. What did we say? We said that. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they have a tendency to do that mm -hmm. when, when they have these stretches, and, you know, and, man, you want to see them move the ball because we know when they move the ball, when they pass, that, that this team is very good, but they can overdo it. And yes. tonight was that like there were, there were a handful of times, I, multiple guys where you're like, just shoot the damn ball. You're right there. Yeah. You don't have to make that extra pass. Yeah. Uh, and, and the Celtics were great at getting in those passing lanes when they did that, knocking those away. Well, while we were watching the game, there were four or five that drove me crazy. And it was the ones when you're in the paint and you have the ability to just pull up and shoot. And instead you're trying to, bounce pass or make an extra squeeze something into a tight spot that it just wasn't going to work. Like, uh, like Coach said, these guys are too athletic. They're, they're too good with their hands. They got two of the best guards in the league uh, defensively. So those were just wasted possessions. And Brad Beal went to the podium the other day when we had a game, I think 18 turnovers or something, 21 turnovers, some crazy number. And they asked him, and what was his response? His, his response was, well, a lot of these turnovers, we just need to shoot if we shoot. But then he went out there and did the same exact thing. It in was the him. First half, yeah. It was him that I yelled at. I'm like, bro, you just got on the podium and said, yo, we're turning the ball over because we're not taking shots we should take. And then you just go right into the lane instead of taking a little flow to try to do a bounce pass to Nurk and it goes out of bounds. And so that's the thing. It's like they know what needs to get done. But they just they, they go into these little spurts where they just forget just simple basketball. And it's, and that drives me crazy. It's tough though because the other night against the Raptors, you're making those passes a guy in the dunker spot that's getting easy dunks too. So it's sometimes yeah. it was spacing too tonight though. Yeah. There was odd spacing when you're trying to do it. And it, it's situational, but they do have a tendency to overpass, and Kevin Durant even talked about that. Uh, but we'll hear from him in a second on overpassing. But yeah, that is that okay. is very much yeah a, a, an Achilles heel of this team. Too much of it. But uh, but uh, the thing I love again, I'll keep saying that. But the thing I love is that these were, for my money, self inflicted. Yeah. And and self inflicted means it can be corrected. Agreed. Right. Yep. Let's hear from Kevin Durant on the overpassing from the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, uh, I think I had a turnover earlier in the game trying to make an interior pass, and, and I, I realized I've been doing that lately, trying to make interior passes when I'm already in my spots to shoot. Um, so some of them, you just got to shoot them. And I think a couple of turnovers I had was in transition. Where we just could, I, I, I should have slowed down a bit and waited for my teammates to set up. Um, you know, so just I, I just, just wanted to be aggressive regardless of it all and play through anything. And, was able to uh, knock some shots down and loosen the defense up. I think we were just right there so many times. You know, they made big plays coming out of each timeout. They made they made threes, got fouled um, when we tried to close the gap. So you got to give them credit. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's very true. And we talked about it during the game. There were a lot of times where the Suns would come down and hit a big three, and then they gave a 
right Maybe. back on the other end. And that's a real momentum killer. And Katie brings up the way the Celtics executed at a timeout. And they were very good at that tonight as well. So that cost uh, the Suns. Uh, you know what also cost us tonight? Yeah, tell me. Our bets. Oh, boy. <laughs> Our bets cost all of us. Yeah, Everybody lost tonight, so I am still leading at 253.50. That's what I get for picking uh, Grayson Allen to hit two threes in a row. Uh, Saul <laughs> is at 108.76. Lindsay uh, was going to—we we were going to not let her have the tip, then we let her have the tip, and then Nurk lost anyway. She, so she wanted she, it. She, she wanted, wanted it, so she so. lost her 10 bucks. Oh, and poor Flex. How's the bottom of the well, Flex? I think it's, you finally hit it. Yeah, it's getting lonely down here, <laughs> but, that, but I see some light. <laughs> yeah, I think that might just be uh, the end of the season coming to put you out of your misery. I think he's just hallucinating because it's so dark down there. Minus 156. <laughs> oh, one. Uh, it's uh, so... <laughs> So hey, bad. think about the bright side. Not like it can get any worse, Flex. Oh, my God. No, that's no, what I'm saying. I mean, it, it, it can. No, no, no. It can. $10 at a time every game. Like, I'm in the, I'm in the coffin. The who? dirt is on me. I'm 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 who, I'm I get, I need some undertaker stuff. Who like who hits first? Eric Gordon a three or you a bet? Damn, that's good. Cool. It's probably Eric Gordon. Can I put can I put money on that? If you did, he'd probably go ten for ten from the field. <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to get in on the action and make better bets than we are right now, or at least the other three, I'm doing all right. <laughs> uh, you can sign up for the BetMGM Sportsbook app. And guess what? Because I'm nice and I like you, I'm gonna give you a hundred and fifty dollars. You gonna give me? No, not oh. you. I mean, maybe at you the see end how of the desperate year, he is. You need one hundred fifty. You help me out. What dog? No, Damn, no, I'm not. Uh, but you can when you sign up for the BetMGM Sportsbook app using that code PHNX. It's really simple. Just download the app in iOS or Android, or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit five dollars into your newly created account. Place a wager in the amount of at least that five hundred dollars at standard odd prices, and once you have placed a bet, you're going to receive that hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. So flex even if they lose like you they're still getting 150 bucks will you lose another 10 mm. so uh, again sign up use that code phnx place your first bet mgm sportsbook wager through the bet mgm sportsbook mobile app for at least five dollars and you're receiving that 150 dollars in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome check the show notes mm. notes out for full details and now listen to damon talk about the disclaimer Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369-NEW-YORK. Call one 800 327 5050 Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-270-7117. For confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-002. Puerto Rico. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Mississippi, New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Get stuffed, Ontario. And yes, Puerto Rico, we do apologize that Flex represents you in betting. Uh, you know, <laughs> we don't apologize for the damn good food over our friends at Illegal Pete's. It is beautiful outside. The rain is gone. The weather is nice. The sunshine is going to be shining bright all this week. And you need to check out the patio at Illegal Pete's. Okay. You can check them out in Tucson if you're down there, up at the Tempe location, all throughout the state. You can check them out because patio season means beers, and that is fun. Also, Illegal Pete's has the strongest margarita in Arizona. It's so strong it can bench 150 pounds without looking. It's that strong. And they also have a full menu that includes bowls, tacos, salads, burritos, nachos, uh, and a full bar, too, and piping hot queso plus this college basketball season it's almost tournament time yeah and, and that means that it's win or go home but yeah. it doesn't matter if you win or lose illegal pete's is here to bring you a win with their legendary sound check deal bring in your ticket sub from any ticketed event and get a draft beer or house margarita for one penny flex you don't have that one much penny? in your account but i'll loan you that penny to get that drink don't okay. you worry uh and you can celebrate uh with whether it's 
it's pre-game or post-game, you can celebrate at Legal Pete's with locations in Tucson and Tempe. They got you covered on all your game day needs. Must purchase an adult entree to redeem a Legal Pete's sound check deal. You're on your own for the food, but I'll buy the drink. <laughs> Illegal Pete's your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. And we've got a buddy out at Footprint Center. You know what time it is, Eric. Yes. Beyond the light, there shall only be one. Welcome, you guys! Gerald, how are you, my friend? Uh, a interesting evening out at Footprint. A lot to talk about. Uh, I want to start with uh, with this, though. What were Katie's thoughts on his big performance tonight? Yeah, I mean, from his perspective, he was just trying to be aggressive. Boston is a team that doesn't double team a lot, so they're a switch heavy defense and that gives guys like him and Bradley Beal the opportunity to hunt mismatches and kind of go to work. So in his mind, he wanted to be aggressive against that type of defense. And he was, um, I think the biggest thing that he mentioned and Frank Vogel both mentioned afterwards in their post game pressers was, uh, his and the sun's tendency to overpass. Um, it feels like at times when they get into their drive and kick game, instead of just taking a good shot, they, try to hunt for the best possible shot. Um, and sometimes it looks beautiful, but sometimes it leads to turnovers. And Vogel was saying he felt like there were probably five instances off the top of his head that they overpassed. It led to a turnover and it deprived them an opportunity to get up a shot. So um, it's one of those things KD was saying, I, I got to get away from making some of those interior passes because um, he noted that he had six of their, I think, 14 turnovers as a team. But, um, you know, Vogel was very complimentary. He was saying, do you know how hard it is to have that type of performance and guard an MVP candidate on the other end? Um, like, he was incredible. And some of the shot making that he had on display against this defensive team that Boston has was really impressive. Yeah, gee, I, I took a lot of positives from this game. I, I really did. I thought the Suns... Uh, showed a lot of fight. This is a very good Boston team, a historically good Boston team statistically. Um, and I, I'm, I, I like what I saw. There, there's just a couple things that I'm a little bit uh, curious. And it's the substitution of David Roddy. When they made that run in the third quarter, got it down to three. Um, it just felt like, I, for my for my money, it just felt like not a good substitution, um, and the results kind of show that. Now I know hindsight being twenty twenty, I'm playing a little bit of Monday morning quarterback here. But did did you guys bring that up to Frank? What was his thought process around the time of that substitution, and uh, did he talk about the need, you know, why he went to Roddy in that spot, and what, what kind of what was he thinking? No, he we he didn't address that, but it felt like you look at the first half and they had Saban Lee in that spot. And those minutes went really poorly. He missed two, three pointers. Um, and it was kind of funny because my mentions were filled with why is Saban Lee playing? Saban Lee's terrible. Um, and I get it when you're in that type of spot against this team, you need to be able to knock down those open shots. He missed two open ones pretty badly. Um, and the Suns gave up a pretty big run as those bench guys were in there. Uh, so at that point, Vogel went in a different direction with those Saban Lee minutes and went to Roddy because he doesn't have Devin Booker and Josh Okoge out there in the rotation right now. They're pretty shorthanded in the guard department right now. Um, so I think he wanted to try a different option. Roddy got a couple of open shots. and He missed those as well. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, we, we used to get on Monty for not making adjustments if guys weren't playing well. Um, and now that we have a coach that is making those adjustments, it's a lot of, well, why did he go to that guy? And, I, I get, I think Bol Bol should have played more minutes tonight, um, but he's not, you know, going to fill in for Bradley Beal when Bradley Beal's out. And the other one that I think a lot of people are harping on is that Thaddeus Young needs a look, and I completely agree. Um, you know, Vogel was asked about that after the game, and he said at this point, Drew Eubanks is ahead of Thaddeus Young on the depth chart. They feel like it's matchup dependent with him, and he could be a change of pace option, a third option there. Uh, but as of right now, Eubanks is ahead of him on the depth chart. So it's kind of what I've been saying for a while now, that it doesn't feel like Vogel sees him as a backup center for this team. Um, it's going to take a stretch where Eubanks is just really terrible, and he turns to Thad, and Thad really performs well 
I think, for that to change, unfortunately. You mean one rebound and nothing else in 11 minutes wasn't enough to go? Maybe Thad Young could give us anything. Anyway, not your decision, though, obviously. Uh, Gerald, uh, what I I want to know is, did Frank or, or Kevin address the fact that I mean, outside of uh, of Beal, Katie, and and Nurk, you you literally got nothing uh, from the rest of the crew tonight. Uh, was there much talk uh, about that and why they thought uh, that was what happened? Yeah, I mean, I had I asked both if they liked the quality of three point looks because that's the big one. You look at Royce O'Neal, Grayson Allen, Eric Gordon going combined four for twenty. Um, you're not going to win many games like that against the best team in the league, especially when you're already missing Devin Booker. So uh, it was just kind of one of those nights it felt like from their perspective, like Vogel was saying, I, I have to go back and watch the film, but he felt pretty happy with the quality of three point looks that they were getting, you know, David Roddy and Saban Lee are not known three point shooters, but those were wide open looks that you kind of have to take in that position. And then they're actual reliable shooters, guys who have shot great percentages for the most part all season uh, or since they joined the Suns in Royce's case, just couldn't, you know, hit the broadside of a barn tonight. It was just really poor timing on their part, but I don't think it's a long-term concern. It is one of those things that we've seen role players around Kevin Durant and Devin Booker struggle with that in the playoffs just as recently as last year. So that's a little concerning, but I do think the track record is on Grayson's side in this case all season. Um, Royce O'Neal is a guy that can get really hot or he can go really cold. We've talked about the streakiness, so that's to be expected. Eric Gordon's the one that's a little concerning for me because, you know, he's a guy that they brought in as a veteran to be able to knock down those shots, to be a threat. And it feels like he hasn't been much of a presence coming off the bench for weeks now. Um, and then he, Vogel did say he hurt his knee, uh, late in that game. That's why he was subbed out and Nurk was put back in really late in the game. So we're going to have to wait for an update on what is going on with his knee as well. Yeah, and I, I misspoke, by the way. I was kind of like Frank Vogel, uh, and I forgot to say Bull Bull uh, as well played uh, a good game tonight too. I don't want to forget about him as one of the guys that played well. Yeah, gee, so, you know, right when we got on, I told you that I, I thought the Suns did a lot of good things. They didn't get the win, but I think this is one of those games I'll look at the tape and I'll confirm some of the things that I thought I saw. I, I, I like what they what they did tonight. And I think that there's uh, a lot of things were self-inflicted from my end that are correctable. I, I'm interested to see what you think. What's your biggest takeaway from what you saw tonight uh, versus the quality opponent we saw it against? Yeah, I don't want to minimize a loss at this point in the season because every loss adds up for a team that is, you know, right on the cusp of play in territory. So it's, I'm not going to say, you know, it's no big deal. It's fine. But in terms of just what I saw on the court, like this was a game where they needed Devin Booker. And, you know, you can say that the Celtics were missing Porzingis too. That's totally fair. But book against this particular defense matters because this is very much a defense that you have to target mismatches and have guys that can create their own offense against those mismatches and they had two of them and you look at what kd and bradley beal were able to produce tonight and that's the type of thing that having that third guy who can also do that really opens things up in a different way for the rest of these guys uh, maybe getting them even more quality looks more three-point attempts i think they only took 31 as a team, which is okay, not but not as many as 39 that the Celtics took. So this was a game they really could have used Book's ability in late in games to stagger lineups more so you don't even have to worry about Saban Lee versus David Roddy or things like that. Um, I, I just I can't put too much stock in a loss like this against the best team in the NBA. They did a lot of things well. Kevin Durant was phenomenal defensively against Tatum and got his. Bradley Beal was able to get to his spots as well. Um, it's just one of those nights where, you know, the role players shoot, hell, 35% from three instead of, you know, four for 20 like those three did, and it's a totally different ball game. Well, Gerald, we appreciate all your hard work out there from the Footprint Center. Uh, we will talk to you early on Monday as we have a early Cavs game. We'll see you for pregame. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. 
Lady G. Okay. One thing I wanted to correct from the chat, it was Eric Gordon that hurt his knee, not Yusuf Nurkic. So uh, Gordon is the one who uh, came out late in the game and they brought Nurk in for him. Let's take a look at some of the super chats. Don Davies with the 499 super chat says, EG and Eubanks have easily been my least favorite sons this season. Whatever, we win with Book, all good. I think we've all been frustrated with both of those guys at different times throughout the year for sure. Uh, Go-To Tech reviews the $5 Super Chat says, Some takeaways. Boston didn't outright beat us. Phoenix beat themselves and not scared of East. KD is incredible. Frank's rotations were crimes (laughs) against humanity. Yeah. I... Yeah. I, <laughs> yes, I, I don't I'm not saying Frank should be locked up. Let's make right. that clear. Right. But it was not pretty tonight. Uh, Travis L with the $5 Super Chat. We know how to beat Denver with a big three, 100%. We can beat the Celtics, too. We scored the most points in the first quarter, so there's that. Thanks, Flex and Espo. Yeah, Suns won a fourth quarter. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the little victory. Snicker Noodles, uh, I like that name. 499 Super Chat. We missed three straight open threes in the last few minutes of the game. We hit those different game. Horford hits a three, Celtics up by eight. Game over let me remind you al horford is almost my age he was at florida when i was at u of a that dude uh is something else and unfortunately did hit that three but god is he old uh lucas lafontaine ten dollar super chat this is just another result of the az curse with our teams when one team wins the other loses hence coyote shut out detroit yesterday so boston came in and beat the suns regardless though let's fucking go suns I don't believe in curses, but I get what you're saying. Don't I believe in a, a cosmic energy that the universe puts out there that sometimes can be frustrating. Okay. I'll say that for okay. it. Okay. Uh, so that is our show. Uh, thank you to everybody in the chat. Most of you are cordial, and we appreciate that. Uh, look, there's another one coming up on Monday. We are off tomorrow, but we'll be back at 4 p.m. That's right, 4 p.m. for a pregame show as the Suns are going to the cesspool that is Cleveland to take on the Cavs. So we'll have pre- and post-game coverage with myself, Flex, Gerald, and if Lindsey doesn't have the plague anymore, maybe Lindsey as well. <laughs> so you can follow him at Flex from Jersey. You can follow the show at PHNX underscore Suns. Thank Thank you to Eric Ruby behind the Mac for producing and uh, all the great things that he does for us. You can follow me at Espo. And remember, screw the luck of the Irish. We got these guys if we face them in the finals. Ahoy, ahoy. We all city like the mayor. 